now I want to invite my dear friend and colleague, Anja Lingbeck. She, well, we've been working together on and off since 1983. And so Anja has worked with us in Ladakh and she helped to start the local food program in the UK in the early 90s. And she herself is in a community in Mexico, growing food, deeply connected to the land and understanding the importance of local knowledge systems, local food systems. She helped to start NGOs in Mexico that are focusing on agroecology, ecotechnology. She helped to start an alternative school. So please welcome Anya, Danish <laughs> Anya, living in Mexico. Thank you so much. I'm going to be talking about food and farming uh, in the context of economics of happiness and big picture activism. And uh, as you heard from Helena, food and farming has been a red thread through my life uh, going back about 40 years. Uh, at some point when I was about 14, I had this sort of experience that transformed my life. Uh, when I went and stayed with some people that had a very hands-on life and I came from an urban environment in Denmark and I suddenly thought, well, you know, the only thing we can't do about, uh, without is food and it seemed so much more meaningful than many of the other sort of paths that one could take and that's the one I've followed for most of my life. In terms of big picture activism and uh, the cultures of happiness that Helena talked about, uh, I am thoroughly convinced that the best thing, if we only were going to do one thing, it's reclaiming our food systems, because that is reclaiming community, is reclaiming life, and it's going to connect us to one another, and that is the fundament for cultures of happiness. Here in Byron, you have, uh, and Mullum, and Bangalore, and uh, all the other places around, amazing examples of local food initiatives. I've been here before, and I was utterly inspired. And I have also been part of setting up a number of local food initiatives that connect local producers with local consumers. I'll get back to that. Uh, as Helena said, we set up the first local food program connecting producers and consumers uh, back in the, the late 90s in the UK, and it catalyzed, it helped to catalyze a local food movement. Today, local food in the UK is top of the trend. It's like you go to any restaurant and they want to say, we have local food for very good reasons. But we have another trend, and it's the one we just heard about recently with a, a, a corporate rule and a corporate trade dictatorship that is supported or facilitated through free trade treaties, lots of them, big subsidies, corporate welfare packages, and also uh, tax extensions and so forth. So on a, the mega trend we have today is actually uh, still uh, monoculture on a very large scale, 10 corporations uh, controlling the majority of the, the food sold in shops across the world. Uh, we have three conglomerates now, uh, big agribusinesses that control 50% of all the seed in the whole world. Uh, and as a consequence, uh, we also have agriculture, according to 15 different studies, accounting for one-third of all the CO2 emissions. And this is just production, because as Camilla just said, we don't even look at transport. Uh, and we have also a, question, a situation where international trade, Helena was also telling us about this insane uh, redundant trade that's going on, don't need to repeat that, but 80% of that international trade is linked to the production of transnational corporations. So we're not talking about trade between countries, we are talking about trade for the sake of profit for big corporations and their shareholders. And if you ever looked at any of the graphs that show the increases in international trade for the last 20, 30 years, you'll see there's another graph that goes just next to it, and that is the increase in CO2 emissions. They are entirely linked, and this is also why 
Nobody wants to look at it. No one wants to be uh, the, to blame. This concentration of agriculture seems to be a blind point. It, we are still, I mean, we've talked about this for 20, 30 years. We talked about what all the pesticides did to poison us. We talked about the loss of land, the loss of biodiversity. But it's still happening at the same time as this sort of local food trend and lots of people want organic food on their plates. They are two parallel trends. We can't stop being concerned about it, even though uh, we are successful, maybe uh, uh, I'd say you're fairly successful here, in, here and in many other places, but still this uh, uh, process is going on on a major scale. And this is facilitated by, for example, the subsidies, uh, fossil fuel subsidies. Uh, I think it was uh, IMF that calculated in 2015 that fossil fuel industry get about uh, 5.3 trillion in subsidies a year, or subsidies to big scale agriculture that is like 75%, 80%, uh, depending on, uh, on, on the regions, go to the the biggest 10%. So we are facilitating this on many different levels. Land grabbing is also a part of this, or the free trade policy. So you have land grabbing by big corporations that either lease or buy the land uh, from small farmers. So you have a process where small farmers are being displaced all over the world. And these are the small farmers that I would like to pinpoint that I see as the hope, the greatest hope for our future, they are the ones that are uh, keeping, maintaining our seed, our live seed banks. They maintain 75% of all the seeds in the world. They're the ones that produce, according to FAO, 70% of all the food we eat worldwide is produced by small farmers. They are the ones that are maintaining biodiversity. Then they're the ones that are, uh, are creating, or oh, uh, using regenerative methods. They are the ones that can sequester the carbon, and they are the ones that produce more per hectare, per acreage, than the big conventional farms. So uh, up to 10 times more, some say, three to 10 times more. In the U EU, uh, 20 countries have a report that the small producers produce more per hectare than a big, large-scale uh, monoculture. So that is the way to go. The thing that is happening, I got one minute of it, in the new economy movement, that I spend a lot of time uh, uh, talking and operating with other uh, organizations and uh, civil, group, uh, civil society groups in the new economy, there's a total blind spot about the importance of agriculture for a new economy. A new economy has to be a new economy without fossil fuels. Without fossil fuels, we will need more hands on the land. We will need local food system, not long distance trade. We will need food security, and that is the role of the small farmers. So we, as an act of, big, act of big picture activism, one of the best things we can do is to engage with that and support that and help that and make it visible. Thank you.